Hello and welcome back to Lorcana Villain. My name is Baker and today we're taking a look at the top eight deck lists for an 8k event featuring 226 players hosted by Charlie's Collectible Show. This event took place on the um, 17th, I believe it started on the 16th, I believe the 16th was Swiss and then 17th was that when they, they had one final round of Swiss I believe to play and then a, and then a cut to top eight. But yeah, a huge event, a huge prize pool. Um, I expect this will be a slightly shorter video because there's only eight lists to look through um, and it's three different ink combinations. There are indeed five Ruby Amethysts. Um, there are two Steel Amber Songs and then one Steel Amethyst. So this video might end up being a bit shorter, I expect, which that's not a bad thing. There's too, been too many long videos on the channel recently. And tomorrow I should be uploading my coverage from the Dark Sphere event in London, which I attended. Uh, and that also comes with a player interview as we talk to Harlan Sweetie, who, if you're a Pixelborn player, then you might recognize the name. To um, very consistently top of the leaderboard and a member of the 20 Law Pro team. And they also made the top eight of the Dark Sphere, Sphere event. So I had a chat with them so that'll be including included in the next video which will make that a bit longer but yeah let's jump in and take a look at the list and don't forget that this channel is sponsored by card market if you're looking for singles from into the inklands then check out card market for all your trading card game needs so in first place, we have Zan with some Steel Amber Flute Song. A, a, a pattern is emerging. We uh, recently had the, the pack online event, large uh, pool of players in that, 182, 83, something like that. Um, and the final was Steel Amber Songs um, versus Sapphire Steel, which was actually a repeat final from the last tournament that was hosted by, um, by the pack. And I've been saying for a while, I feel like Steel Amber Songs has just not got enough pilots. Um, but it's actually re really well situated and, yeah, doing really well in the last two pack events. And then taking first place at this huge event hosted by Car uh, Charlie's Collectible Show. So, yes, we've got Steel Amber Flute Song. Take advantage of four copies of Sleepy's Flute. Two cost uninkable. Exert, if you played a song this turn, gain one lore. So we've got, a pl uh, we've got plenty of songs here to get this going. Three copies of Bare Necessities to snipe away those songs. Really important for the Be Prepared to grab your swords and against um, a deceiver of all Ursulas that might just be playing Mother Knows Best and friends on the other side. Snoop those away. Take away that tempo advantage for them. We've got two copies of the world's greatest criminal mind. My cat is right next to me and he just absolutely jumped. Hi, Hades. I was wondering if you'd ever make your debut. <laughs> there he was just sitting there minding his own business. And I burst into song. How rude. It's like, what on earth? But yeah, two copies of the world's greatest criminal mind. Good for the opposing stout-hearted Cinderella. For Maui's. For Maleficent Dragons, which are very, very common and very popular. Uh, Maui Whales. You see some of them. Uh, but there's some extra synergy here because we're running a 4-4 line of the Queen. Um, the one drop being a 2-2 and the five cost being a shift two character so I can sing our songs nice and cheap. 4-3 stat line quest for two and her ability, who is the fairest when this character quests. One character gets plus four strength, another gets minus four. So this is great for us to boost our own characters, to make ourselves bigger bodies, take on characters, take on locations. But also we can just make them stronger and then the world's greatest criminal mind will indeed hit them. So we'd love to see that too. Uh, four copies of Let the Storm Rage On for two ping damage and draw a card. Four copies of Strength of a Raging Fire to get some nice high numbers, hopefully, if we've got a nice wide board. Four copies. I love this. I've been saying this for a while. Two, I don't think two, I don't think I'd ever just play two Zeus in a steel deck. I think this is such an important card. And to, let's be real, you could say the same about a lot of things in the deck, and it's uninkable, but I really like this card. I think at least a three, but yeah, all in on the four. Like, this list is really clean. Uh, four copies of a whole new world. Only two copies copies of Grab Your Swords, and then onto our characters, four copies of the ball, Ballroom Sensation Cinderella, who's going to sing these three cost songs, hopefully on turn two, as well as providing a shift target for two copies of Stout Hearted Cinderella, Resist Two, Quest for Three, Five Five, Challenge uh, Ready Characters if you sing a song, a fantastic card, and some decks just really struggle to answer it. The 4-4 Queen, as I said, also the 4-4 Robin Hood. We've got 2-2 two, two on the 1-drop, and the 5-drop is Shift 3, so another cheap singer for these 5-cost songs. 3-6 stat line. The 3 is unfortunate because he gets banished to Madame Medusa, but the 6 is good because he survives, and then along came Zeus, and then just, again, just bit bigger and bulky are going to survive more. Two abilities. Um, if we banish a character, we gain 2 lore. We love to see it. And the good of others, if this character is banished in a challenge, you can draw a card. Drawing cards is indeed king. 4 copies of Ariel, who's hopefully going to find the 
these songs if we don't whiff by looking at the top four cards of our deck. If we've got a song, put it in our hand, any other characters to the bottom of the deck. And I, I don't mention this as, as much. Whenever I'm editing and I, I see myself talking about Ariel, like, I keep forgetting to mention, like, it's it's not ma massively important, but it can be. Just for, like, putting the... Um, some characters, putting them to the bottom of your deck is going to be more fortunate because you might not want to see them yet or in that particular game, but it's a double-edged sword because sometimes you'll see a character that you're thinking, oh, I really could have used that in the next couple of turns. And if, especially if it's one of your lower drops like Cindy. Um, so yeah, it's a double-edged sword, but something that you need to take in cons into consideration when you're fishing with Ariel about what characters you might not uh, have access to anymore for the rest of the game. Three copies of Bender, Respecting Items, Fishbone Quill, Sorceress Spellbook, Sleepy's Flutes, Lucky Bloomin' Dimes. <laughs> These are things that gotta go, so yeah, I like the Bengers. Three copies of Hades to return character to our hand when we play him from the discard part. Well, I, I, I said that. Words were just completely wrong there. When you play this character, return a character of yours from your discard to your hand. So good more copies of this because they can recycle each other. Good for against discard or just, just keep your resources. But yeah, helping us get back a piece we might need. The aerial, um, the one-off Rapunzel, or whatever it might be. Uh, yeah, one, one Rapunzel here for some additional card draw. It's fine. We've got, um, we're, we're playing whole new worlds and yeah that's pretty much everything and yeah all the way in on the sleepy's flute however we are playing 21 uninkables that's a lot um get ready for the ladder to be a lot of steel amber songs and also get ready for people to be trialing out more uninkables i don't think more uninkables is 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 necessarily good and um, what i would say is i think if you are going to play a deck with this many uninkables you need to, I think you need to be like in the top percent of pilots and Zan quite clearly is. Um, so yeah, like 21 uninkables sounds a lot. Um, maybe that's a bad take. I, 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 tell me, I can, t I, can, I, can, I can take it. But yeah, I would not advise everybody look at this and go, oh, I can go, I can, I can chuck another three, four, five uninkables in my deck. Um, be honest with yourself and, but I mean, hey, try it by all means. But I don't think everybody is going to get success with this high of an uninkable count. I think there's a lot to be said around the, pi uh, the, the, the piloting of a deck. But even then, with the, like, I don't consider myself to be the best pilot. Like, these are the best players and these are the average players. I feel like I'm here somewhere. <laughs> and then sometimes I make decisions that are up here and then sometimes I make decisions that are all the way down, all the way down here. <laughs> But I don't know. I don't. I don't fancy my chances at running this particularly well with this many uninkables. Um, but hey, maybe that's a bad take. Maybe it would be fine. But I wouldn't recommend everyone start suddenly start saying, "Oh, 21 un uninkables is, is just going to be fine." Um, I could be proved completely wrong. And next top cut we see is all Steel Amber songs, all 20 to 21 uninkables. Ruby Amethyst back to 20, 21 uninkables. Um, and by all means, tell me come back here and tell me I was wrong but yeah nonetheless a fantastic showing from Zan with flute song deck looks good congratulations to them oh and I was gonna say it but I got I got sidetracked going on that little um little rant no beasts no beast tragic heroes um also no Mr. Smee um which I, I think is less dramatic I really like Mr. Smee but fair enough but no beasts um I mean, like, you, you, you kind of got to see see it, right? Like, the amount of Ruby Amethyst you're going to be expecting, like, most are playing two to four Medusa. Um, so, I don't disagree with the call. And, hey, if, you, if you're looking... I, I mean, I don't know how budget this is. It looks fairly budget, to be fair. The Robin Hoods are going to be pricey. Um, I think Cinderella's are okay. Everything else, I, I feel... I mean, it's only one Rapunzel as well. So, semi-budget? If you don't have the Beast Tragic Heroes, but even if you do have the Tragic Heroes, maybe something to take into account that Zan uh, chose not to play them. But yeah, congratulations to them. Going on to our one other Steel Amber list, we've got Christian, who instead of playing the Sleepy's Flutes, is going with the Lantern so for some cheaper character drops. Uh, we'll go through the songs first, though, anyway. Three copies of the Bare Necessities, the three, three of Storm Rage on and Strength of Raging Fire, just the two Zeus, four Whole New World, and three Grab Your Swords. We're seeing three copies of Stout Hearted Cinderella here, so we're more in on that. Um, we're seeing a 4 4 Rockstar Stitch line, um, who's an aggressive quester, and we don't have tons of one to two drops, but tw 12 is perfectly 
that's perfectly fine. There's enough targets to be adoring fans. So yeah, opting to go to, uh, to go a slightly different way in that respect. Also, three copies of Rapunzel for additional draw, so we don't need to be all in on the whole new world. And also here we are seeing the four copies of Beast Tragic Hero for the card drawer and to potentially be a big bigger beat stick. But we're also seeing one copy of Chernabog. Um, for each character card in your discard, you pay one less to play him. And when you do play him, shuffle all character cards from your discard into your deck. I mean, like, this is a deck that looks like it would benefit from this um, shuffle in. Um, and yeah, you tend to spread wide quite quickly. So I imagine this comes online quickly, uh, quicker. Um, we've got three lanterns on top. So yeah, interesting. I don't hate it by any means. So yeah, huge congratulations to Christian. We'll do our Ruby Amethyst lists next. We'll save the um, uh, Amethyst steel till last. So five to go through. In second place, we've got Edmund with some Ruby Amethyst control. Once again, if you're really new to the game and you'd like a deep insight into Ruby Amethyst, go check out my video called So You Want to Play Control. Go give that a watch. It's long, but it, we, we, go, we go deep. So we've got the 4-4 four, four Rafiki and Chernobog's followers line, which I, I saw the other day a um, couple of people in the, the pack event were running this instead of the traditional 1-3s, which has been traditional for a while for Ruby Amethyst. Uh, mostly because of Bo um, Borum Sensation Cinderella and Turn 2 Storm Rage on. But that fell off. Like, you've done, not seen a lot of Seal Amazons for a while. So this has probably been safer for a while. And it's probably taken more people a while to come round to the idea of like, this is just fine. You don't need the 1-3s necessarily anymore. Um, but I think with the success that Steel Amber Songs has just had, um, it's more likely that you might get punished for this more now. And by not having the 1-3, um, the meta will reshape this. But yeah, Shadowbox followers for some additional card draw and Rafiki hitting for that magic 3 number. Four copies of Kuzgo uh, Wanted Llama for some additional card draw. We've got the, this, this is really clean. This is nearly all fours and let, uh, bar three cards. Um, we've got the four snake, the four fox, the four goat, the four rabbit, all the way in on the Maleficent. I only ran two Maleficent in my RA deck. And I, 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 I kept thinking, oh, it should probably be three, but I think four. Max out on your draw and Ruby Amethyst. You've got a just one copy of Merlin Crab, which I think is fine for Maui. And then we've got a 4-4 four, four line of Tremaine and Medusa. That's a heavy line. 17 uninkables is not unreasonable for Ruby Amethyst. It's still more than I particularly like. Um, but it's not unreasonable per se. The deck draws well. That's the point. Um, but yeah, all in on both the girls. And to be fair, like, I don't know how much... Um, blue like lucky dime tamatoa stuff was going on in this in in this tournament but i think tremaine helps against those decks because they're less able to extend and play an extra character it tends to be just a gaston drop or just a tamatoa drop and if you can keep removing them then you could you can like again they, they're still able to play a character and then immediately tilt the lucky dime so it's not over by any stretch but i i, I am moving back to the idea that i'm thinking tremaine probably is going to get a bit more value at least while while blue might remain good and um, four copies of the monstrous dragon four friends four be prepared the one copy of sorcerer's spell book really important in the mirror um, i only ran one but i actually think two is probably for the best and then the two maui's fish hook which is such a diverse card hitting bigger numbers becoming evasive hitting evasive and all that jazz so yeah really clean looking list um all in on the ladies but but I don't know, I've said a lot about how I think Tremaine should be a low account, but I'm coming around. I still think she should be a lower count than Medusa, but hey, we're just all in on both here. So yeah, maybe like this is probably worth trying. But yeah, congratulations to Edmund on second place. Hey, it's the halfway point of the video, so I'm here to remind you that this channel is also sponsored by Whatnot. If you're not already a Whatnot customer, you can sign up using my link in the description to get £10 off your first purchase. Next up in top eight, we've got George, who was the winner of the recent SGC Philadelphia. Um, brought uh, Ruby Amethyst there, uh, in for that event as well, but have, they have made some changes to this list. Um, they've kept the four Olaf with the 1-3, and they've got the four of the Rafiki, three Wanted Llama, four Snake, four Fox... Uh, four Rabbit, four Goat, we've got two Crab, three Maleficent, we're seeing the two Pinocchio here, Talkative Puppet to exert opposing characters. The four Maui, just one Yzma, they dropped an Yzma, I think they were playing two Yzma in their um, Philly list. And they've also added in a Tremaine, I think their last list was just... I keep saying I think, I might as well just get the list up in front of me. And yeah, they, they've dropped one Yzma, um, and they've added in one Lady Tremaine. The same count of Medusa, Maleficent, and Dragon's Fire. Um, they've got four friends, four be prepared, one spell book, two Maui's Fishhook, and this time they're running the Three Queens Castle. From their previous list, they have cut two mini Stylish Surfer, and they've cut three Be Prepared. 
They've cut one Kuzgo and they've dropped one Yzma. So that's seven spaces they've made for an extra Maleficent, the, the, um, the Lady Tremaine, the uh, Queen's Castles. Sorry, this happened and I completely lost my trail of thought. Um, I was trying to keep track of what all the cuts and all the additions are. But yeah, they've got a slightly different line, um, the Tremaine definitely. And then opting to play the Queen's Castles this time, um, which I, I still like Castle. I'm, I've moved down to a two count myself, but if it does get to stick, then it just provides so much value. Um, so yeah, George definitely entering themselves into final boss territory uh, with their recent success. So huge congratulations to them. Next up, we've got Ryan in top eight, who's running Ruby Amethyst Location Control. Uh, we're opting for four uh, one threes, two minis, two Olaf, only three Rafiki, um, two coups go. We've got the standard count of all the bounce stuff, two Crab, two Maleficent, we're seeing the two Pinocchio here. Um, two Yzma, two Medusa, no Tremaine, two Maleficent, we're seeing two Teeth and Ambitions, lots of twos. Um, but we are seeing three copies of Jim Hawkins' Space Traveller. And not only the four copies of the Queen's Castle, but Ryan with the RLS Legacy, which most Ruby Ameth Amethyst players have cut. But I, I, I love that Ryan brought it back and was like, no, this card, this card is good. Um, and I love that they've had, they've had some success with it in such a big field. Um, again, I'm not saying I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go back to gyms and RLS legacies, um, but it is nice to see this kind of more original build of Ruby Amethyst um, still doing well. Um, so yeah, huge congratulations to Ryan. Next up, we've got Logan, who is the same the same lineup of one drops that we just looked at. Um, three coups. Got most of this looks very similar. The three Maleficent, the two Crab, running three Medusa, no Tremaines, two Maleficent, two Dragons Fire. I'm a big fan of three Teeth and Ambitions. I've moved all the way all the way away from Teeth and Ambitions um, personally, um, but to be fair, maybe that's why not as many Ruby Amethyst decks did well, did as well against the Amethyst Steel deck that we're going to be looking at last. Um, but yeah, four friends, four be paired, the one spell book, the two Maui's fish hook, and two copies of the Queen's Castle. This list does look pretty similar to what I ran other than the Teeth and Ambitions. Um, but yeah, fantastic looking. Well done to Logan. And our last Ruby Amethyst control list, we've got James, uh, who is running a 4-4 Shernabog followers and Rafiki, but also slipping in to Pascal, who becomes an evasive character when you have other characters on the board. So cheating out some more lore and just have more one drops in general. Uh, four coups go, four snake, four fox, more, four Maleficent, big fan of all those counts. Uh, we've got the two Pinocchio. We are seeing, seeing the four stylish surfer mini um, making their way into this deck. Four goat, four rabbit, four Maui, um, four Yzma all the way in on that. Only one copy of Madame Medusa seems low. No Maleficence. Um, four friends. To be, pre to be prepared. <laughs> what? Uh, one Sorcerer's Spellbook. One Maui's Fishhook. And one copy. Like, even, even Hades is shocked. That's an Ursula's Cauldron, my G. <laughs> I know, right? When was the last time we saw an Ursula's Cauldron, my guy? It's been a minute, right? Um, sure. <laughs> oh, I oh, know. <laughs> this seems really rare. I like, I like the four Yzma, four Maleficent, four Coups Go. I don't even mind the two Pascal, like just extra one drops. And yeah, like it, it, they, they could cheat out a few lore before your opponent necessarily has anything to do about it. Um, it's just a bit random, the one cauldron, but... It's so good to see Cauldron in a set three list. Um, yeah, you're probably going on the farm now. We'll see. I don't know how well it will look, how good it would look. Uh, but yeah, try out this version of Ruby Control, of Ruby Amethyst Control, my guys. Ursus Cauldron back in. But yeah, congratulations to James. And last but not least, in top four we have Zach. Bivens, the final boss himself. If you've been watching my channel for a while, then you more like more than likely have heard of Zach Bivens by now. Um, and if not through me, you may have already heard of him. A fantastic player, one of the best um, 
resumes so far when it comes to Lorcana. Um, and yeah, he actually sent me after his day one. He, he gave me a sneak peek of this list. Obviously, asked me not to share it until because um, he started to play. Uh, but yeah, gave me a sneak peek of this. The Ruby Amethyst Killer. Um, such a good meta call. Um, so yeah, we are just aggro with bodyguards. And we did look at a list very similar in the pack event the other day. Although they were running the Pinocchio on the run. Come on, Zach. Where's the Pinocchio on the run, my G? <laughs> Live a little. <laughs> Zach saying... No, I wanted to do well. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I like that Pinocchio. But nonetheless, the similar idea. We just aggro with bodyguards, but we can play a mid-range game. We've got the four Shadow Box followers to be a quester or to check some things. Or we can or we can draw cards and fin our deck. Four Maleficent biding her time to be an aggro character. We've got four Olaf as another one drop to, fe uh, to feed our bounce mechanic cards. The four snake, the four fox. Um, we are also running four goat and four rabbit. We've got three copies of Star Attraction Pinocchio. Another aggro character. One level up from Maleficent, a two cost uninkable questing for three. Four copies of Mr. Smee, a two cost inkable three three who quests for two. The ability we nearly don't care about at all. We do not have any captains. I feel like the prince could could have been a captain. I don't know if he was though, but I I, I, I double looked there to check. It is the prince a captain, but unfortunately not. But it doesn't matter. Smee's a fantastic character. Hitting for three is enough. Questing for two, he's cheap, inkable. Just two copies of Arthur in this particular list, which I would have thought is such an important piece that I would have thought maybe at least three, but I'd submit completely to Zach's uh, deck building knowledge. Man says two is enough. I'm going to put in a lot of work returning characters to our hand to give us a two law bump, which obviously is gaining law, which is advancing our win condition, but is also keeping our characters safe after they quest. Um, the snake, the four Maleficent for the extra card draw, and then we're running a three four line of bodyguards, uh, Hercules and the prince. I know that Zach's favourite character is Hercules, so I can only imagine that this the, the, the giving four to the prince he just felt was the better meta call because i know if he if it didn't matter that he would have gone with the with the four hercules just out of, out of it being his favorite character i would assume um but yeah the the prince um with a one three stat line quest for two and resist one hercules only questing for one that has a three three stat line which does take out the challenging madam min fox which is a, which is an important interaction four copies of a fuddle to return a character or item would cost two or less to the player's hand good for opposing aggro um good for hitting the snake or just the one drop against Ruby Amethyst. Could have hit the Porpsicle. But I imagine that came in clutch quite a few times that day. Just three copies of Friends on the other side. Four Strength of a Raging Fire and one Sorcerer's Spellbook. So yeah, fantastic meta call. Um, Zach said that his auto loss is Steel Amber Songs. Which is what he faced in the top four. Um, although he still won game one on, on the draw. going set, Lost the dice roll. Still won game one. Um, so man went down swinging, but yeah, Steel Amber Songs, he, he said, is, I, and you can see, is is pretty pretty lethal for this uh, for this deck. But another fantastic um, top from Zach Bivens. Uh, huge congratulations to him. And that is it for the top eight deck lists for the 8K at Charlie's Collectibles show. Um, so not as diverse a set of um, set of inks as we maybe looked at in the pack, but that was top 16. Um, but yeah, Ruby Amethyst, it's still not going anywhere. Five slots taken up, but Steel Amber Songs um, taking up two of those slots and another well, uh, another great performance in the pack event recently. So I expect to see a lot more Steel Amber Songs um, around for a couple of weeks. So yeah, I don't think this is the time to try out Zach's uh, Purple Steel deck because I feel like more people are gonna go on to Steel Amber. So give it a couple of weeks and then and then sneak that uh, sneak that in. But yeah, that's it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new to the channel, please subscribe for all things Orkana. Hit the like button to show your support, and we'll see you soon. Uh...